Before we start this video, I'd just like to say um, we're on the third round of the DTM series and um, so far the interest has been kind of um, mediocre, I guess. And this is not a plea for more views or uh, more recognition. It's just more, I want to hear your opinions on the series to know what I can do to make it better for everyone. And um, yeah, I'm constantly working on making all of AIRS as good as I can. And so any constructive feedback is really appreciated. Anyways, on with the video. Hello and welcome one and all to the third round of AIRS DTM Season 1. Today we're here at the historic Imola circuit for what can be called a mid-season race. So we're already halfway through the calendar, as a six-race calendar means that every race matters that much more. Uh, it's a lovely sunny day, and we've got 14 laps of the San Marino uh, circuit. That was a fail at saying San Marino. Anyway, let's get down to the grid. So, on pole position for today's race, is Q Fujibashi, your championship leader at the moment, followed by Louis Sage. Then we got Tom Smith Q in third, and then Carlos Rosales fourth. James Smith is in fifth. And then we got Isabel Harvey, JC Dixon, Yuri Tugud, second in the championship, Kadish Kupra, best qualifying from him. And then we have Jin Chan Won, another personal best qualification for him. Alan Kopic, Nore Kemerdzian. Jonathan Granville, Nicolo Shaikatano, Mitchell Langenberg, Daniel Gray, Gotthard Harnell making his debut in the season so far, to, uh, this season, Finley Taylor, Alex Cajona Sr., Jensen Booker, Wolfram Schock, another debutant, Armani Risotto, Simon, uh, yes. <laughs> Joseph Murray Sr., Matthew Barton, Rudolf Schalter, Alex Portland Wilson, Yaya Tunde, Jurgen Noska, TJ Nisbet, Baba Tunde, and Juan Luis Ramirez rounds out your grid for today's race. And without further ado, we're going to watch for the lights as here we go. So, the setting of DTM for today as we're going to watch for the lights. And we're green and it's a good start from Fujibashi and it's a good start from Sage but Tom and Hugh has possibly made the best start of the top three as they're blasting down towards turn one right now as we get a nice bit of lag but as you can see Thomas McHugh is right alongside Louis Sage but it's Hugh Fujibashi who leads out of the first chicane. Thomas McHugh as well, he's up into second already, he's looking very hot to uh, try and get a good performance here today. As we watch them, they're already through sector one, and everyone is bunching up side by side. Imola is a very good circuit for the racing, as you're going to see over the next 14 laps. So having a look at right from the back, we're going to see Jürgen Noske battling with Juan Luis Ramirez and TJ Nisbet. If you don't remember, Nisbet last time out had a brilliant performance at the Nürburgring, but this time he's not qualified so hot. And he's down right at the back. And going up the order, we've got some bigger names in the series like Simon K. Another guy that's been performing very well at the start of the season. Not had the best qualifying in this race and he's back down the field as well. Uh, there's Yuri Tuga battling with Alan Kopic. She's in a pretty good position in the championship at the moment. Uh, I believe that she's battling for uh, ninth place, yes. As we're watching Kadish Kupra, the uh, Pakistani driver, hounding the back of the Luxembourgish driver. That's James Smith in the number four AMG. James Smith's not had a bad season indeed, and uh, once again proving his worth as they blast down the straight and through Tamborello. As we're going to go up to the lead battle and see that it is Q Fujibashi who has led a lap. 
And now she's defending from the BMW and the two Mercedes. So Thomas McHugh is looking very quick at the moment as we're going to get an on board with him. As Fujibashi is going to get a good exit out of uh, Toza there. And up the hill once again. In the sector 2. And McHugh is just going to be hoping to get some good points today. He uh, won the first race of the season, uh, but didn't score too hotly in the Nürburgring race. Uh, so at the moment, he's looking for a good performance once again. And there's Louis Sage as well. Two drivers who have been at the top of their game in um, the F1 series. And certainly are no slouch as uh, Carlos Rosales in the other AMG, that's the number three AMG. He's riding on the back of Louis Sage. As Louis Sage is going to dive underneath Thomas McHugh and Isabel Harvey's thinking of having a go on Rosales as well. As we watch them all go past, it's kind of hard to see. But it looks like Carlos Rosales has managed to defend, but Luis Sage has managed to retake second position. However, this allows Q Fujibashi to get away. She's got a 0.8 second lead. As Isabel Harvey now is up the inside of Rosales, and Rosales has managed to. He, he's conceded the position and Isabel Harvey has managed to get past into fourth. And up front though, it's McHugh, Sage and Fujibashi who lead. So we're going to try a different camera out. As we have this nice camera on his uh, side, as we're going to see him almost hitting the quarter panel, the rear quarter panel for Louis Sage's uh, exact speed. But as you can see, the number 14 Schnitz uh, BMW of Thomas McHugh is right on the back of the leading two. As they plop around the two right handers there through Aqua Minerale and up towards the chicane. Looks like Isabel Harvey is having a good race too and she's catching up to lead four. Blasting through the chicane now. Uh, let's have a quick look at who has the fastest lap of the race. Shin Chan won at the moment. As we are on lap 3 of 14, about to enter lap 4. And the top 3 are really, really close. As here comes Thomas McHugh. Is he going to try and go around the outside? He tries. As Rosales gets on two wheels there. That was a bit scary there from... Uh, the AMG driver, you can tell he's right on the edge. And around the final corner, Fujibashi comes out of it. And leads across the line. So, so far, Q Fujibashi is putting up a good fight. And maintaining that lead. But Louis Sage is right on the back. He's getting very hot into that corner. And he's managed to slow it down. And he's carrying that momentum. And it's not going to be too long before we see Louis Sage perhaps making a move for the lead on Fujibashi. Around Toza once more. And top three have closed up again. I'm going to go down the order and see what's going on. So we have the battle here between the two AMGs. That's Carlos Rosales and James Smith. JC Dixon, he's running 7th and Kadish Cooper in the final points paying position in 8th. Yuri Tugud is in 9th, followed by Alan Kopic and Nora Kermertian. Back a little bit more, we have Jonathan Granville battling with Langenberg and Jin Chan Won and Nicolo Sharkatano, as that's Mitchell Langenberg getting a uh, Getting sideways out the corner, he's going to lose positions. I think he's going to lose two positions to, to the cars around him. Albeit Mitchell Langbus actually just barged Shark Tano out the way. And he's uh, maintaining his 14th position. 
And here comes Norek Kermertian underneath Alan Kopic. And uh, it looks like it's going to be a defensive line into the second of the two right handers. And indeed, Norek Kermertian has defended nicely. Bit of bumping there. The two drivers going side by side. And it looks like Alan Kopic is actually going to defend that position. And he's going to keep. Or is he? No, it looks like Kermerzian's managed to get... He's managed to get past. And, uh... Yeah, he's maintaining that 10th position. As I've noticed something here. We have a driver falling off the back of the field. And it's Yaya Tunde. What has happened to Yaya Tunde? Oh, no. Oh no. So here's Tunde, he's going around the left hander. All good. And then he's following Nisbet around the left other left hander. And he gets on two wheels. And he, he saves it. He gets on his side but manages to save it. Uh, but spins it because of the momentum switch. And uh, yeah, he's just been stuck in the wall. Trying to get going again. Perhaps his reverse gear wasn't working too well. And uh yeah, poor Yaya Tunde, he's way off the back now, and that's going to be where he finishes, unfortunately. Up front, though, is Q Fujibahashi once again, who is taking that lead and defending for her life. But here's Louis Sage, he's having a look up the inside there. That's an that's a opportunistic place to try and overtake her driver. No. Up the hill. You can see Louis Sage is getting so, so close. As we're going to get a nice uh, camera here. So we're going to see he's going to come right onto the back of Fujibayashi. If I was Sage, I'd try and put a move into this left hander. Let's see what he's going to do. No, he's going to run right into the back. He's going to give him a bit of a bump. And in fact, he has got past Fujibashi. Uh, that was the move he really needed. And Louis Sage runs into the lead. As they all pass through this section, it is really a six-way battle. Fujibashi is not going to be too happy with that. As, um... Yeah, indeed, she's not going to be too happy that she's been bumped out of the way. As I'm just having a look here, it looks like Yuri Tugan has managed to get into the points. But up front is a huge battle for the lead. As we're going to go on board with Luxembourg's uh, most talented driver in the AIRS series. Or Luxembourg's only driver, James Smith. Right on the back of... Carlos Rosales and they go up the hill and uh, these cars with not so much power, not so much grip makes for a nice just bit of touring car racing as uh, Smith gets a little bit wide and that's perhaps going to allow Kadish Cooper to get a little bit nearer as they head in here he makes a brilliant move on Carlos Rosales I think he's going to block pass him Indeed he does, that's a good move from James Smith, he's up into 5th position. But up front, Thomas McHugh fighting Q Fujibashi, and Q Fujibashi is defending from McHugh, but attacking Louis Sage in the meantime. As really the ideal situation is to front run these races as Fujibashi gets locked up into the corner. But she's cleanly made that move. And here comes Thomas McHugh. I think Louis Sage was just a bit conservative on the brakes. And now he has lost two positions. As James Smith is up into fourth position now after overtaking uh, Isabel Harvey. So your new race leader is one that you've seen before. It's Q Fujibashi who takes the lead of this race. As they head down the down the straight and into the first chicane. 
Fujibashi really having a go here and uh, trying to break away because uh, these cars tend to run in packs like this and once you're off the back of a pack then you really can't catch up too easy apologies uh, I'm quite tired today and uh, that's perhaps why my commentary isn't too good today um, and as I, as I said at the start of the video um, yeah I'd say that the uh, involvement in this series has been a little down on what I would like and so it's kind of a, a bit of a struggle to get the motivation to do this when you're not bringing as much enjoyment to other people as you think you could be as we're midway through the race now um, and so far I think we've had some decent racing and some good overtakes but it is Fujibashi who has the lead at the moment and a commanding lead at that as it looks like Fujibashi is trying to make a breakaway and if she does that then it will be very hard for the others to keep up as Louis H is alongside Thomas McHugh as they're going to be running down the straight they threw the kink uh, Louis Sage is going to try and run a wide line and into the chicane. Sage puts it into the back of uh, Thomas McHugh. Not the best line from Sage. Uh, as it looks like they're all safely running through the chicane. And Louis Sage is going to get past McHugh. So that's the Zach Speed into second place. And we're going to watch um, the AMG here. And he's been overtaken by the... Um, the uh, Linda car, I think that is. Uh, could, could be wrong. Or the Valier, I can't... No, it's a Valier, sorry. Kadish Cooper on the... Any, anyways. Oh, it runs a little bit wide there. He's really pushing now, Kadish Cooper. Uh, he's eyeing a podium here, the Pakistani driver. As Isabel Harvey's going to try and run it around the outside. I think she's got a better exit up the hill. As it's fair to mention that Q Fujibashi has made that breakaway and the gap is very much up. It's up to 3.7 seconds. Fujibashi really having a go here. This is what happens when you upgrade people. You just generally are going to be in the better half of the grid. And you'll start to see that more and more across the season, perhaps by the end. It'll be the usual suspects once again who are battling for those wins and stuff. As Louis Sage plummets down the hill and under the bridge, as it looks like Louis Sage is trying to make a break on Thomas McHugh, and Thomas McHugh has made a break on Harvey Cooper Smith and the others. As let's get uh, on board with Nora Kumerzian. What kind of on board shall we get from him? Not too many nice on boards for this. Uh, you can see how battered the rear of Kumerzian's car is. It's really bumped in, and that's just testament to touring car racing. People like to get a bit, bit. Um, aggressive with their overtakes, perhaps use a bit of a bump and run which uh, it may not be allowed in Formula 1 really but it's certainly allowed here as Noria Kermerzian's car is really battered as we're on lap 9 of 14 now as Alan Kopic makes a move on JC Dixon and Kiddish Cooper is in 5th now as Harvey is trying to catch uh, McHugh. Uh, Harvey and McHugh, good friends. Um, yeah, I mean, and both of them, very good drivers. In Formula 1, they've got very commanding seats, and um, yeah, they're very involved in the running of AIRS, and uh, they're doing a good job here today. Positions 3 and 4. Uh, Isabel Harvey is doing a, doing a stellar job and so is McHugh and uh, 
So is Sage and Fujibashi, and Fujibashi has been caught here a bit by Louis Sage. So although Fujibashi made that breakaway, it looks like Louis Sage has responded with some good lap times, and that means that Fujibashi has been caught slightly, and we may see Sage right on the back of the Machon's driver very shortly. To see the fastest lap of the race, it's Yaya Tunde, and Yaya Tunde, if you remember, had the uh, half flip, and uh, yeah, he's managed to recover, and in clean air, he's managed to set a very good lap time of 1 minute 50.5. I believe that's actually quicker than the pole time, which is uh, funny actually, but hey. Louis H under attack here. Thomas McHugh tries to go around the outside into the chicane, doesn't quite work, and now around Toza, he's hounding the Zack Speed driver. So we're going to get on board. And breaking down towards the left hander, they take quite a shallow line. And as you can see, that BMW's right on the back. And up the hill. And down towards the chicane. They're really, really close now. It's not going to be long before Thomas McHugh attempts a move. And perhaps we'll see one right into this uh, left-hander. <sighs> Doesn't quite work for Thomas McHugh. He stays in behind. As Louis H, you can see there, he was getting a little bit sideways as we're about to enter lap 11 of 14. We're over two thirds race distance now. As McHugh tries to get a better exit, I don't think he has. And it looks like Fujibashi is really bringing out that lead once again. As we're going to go right around to the back and see who, where, who's where. As James Smith is now taking the fastest lap, by the way. So right at the back, we have, well, Yaya Tunde is right at the back. But on the back of the pack that haven't had a crash, we have Jürgen Noska, Alex Portland Wilson, TJ Nisbet, Juan Luis Ramirez, Wolfram Schock, Baba Tunde, and out in the field we have Charles Conis Senior, uh, we have uh, Simon, Barton, Risotto, Murray Senior, Taylor, Booker, Harnell. Harnell's having a great race, to be fair. Uh, no experience in the um, in this season. He's just kind of got dropped in as a reserve and uh, performing well. He's in 17th. As we're going to go even more further up the grid. And see that uh, Yuri Tuga battling with Nora Kamerzi in the Armenian for 7th place. And then we have the two AMGs battling once again for 5th. That is Smith and Rosales. And then we got a battle, battle for 2nd place between Sage, McHugh and Harvey. So McHugh's going to close up right into the left-hander. Perhaps we'll see a good exit from McCune here. And um, indeed, it looks like McHugh's got a good exit. In fact, it doesn't look so good as Sage has got an even better exit. Uh, and it looks like Isabel Harvey's closing up on McHugh here. Maybe we're going to see a move into turn one. But it looks like. Um, Looks to me that Louis Sage has had enough of being in the pack and is going to try and close down Fujibashi once more. As I've noticed something else, we have another driver who's fallen off the back. It is it's Matthew Barton. Let's see what's happened to him. Okay, maybe we've gone too far back now. As you can see, Matthew Barton is battling with his teammates. 
So there's a driver up in the background. Let's try and see who that was. Oh! What's up in there? Oh, Mitchell Langenberg. Sorry, I need to work out what's happened here. So Mitchell Langenberg has come around the left. And yeah, he's gone on the curb and he's gone on his side, much like what Yaya Tunde has done. And uh, yeah, he's just spun. Oh, and he's rejoined badly. He's absolutely clouted Matthew Barton. And uh, yeah, that's really bad for Mitchell Langenberg. That's a penalty coming his way. For sure. And that's going to have to be decided after the race. I don't think that's going to be a disqualification for the uh, Belgian. But that's certainly not good. And uh, Matthew Barton has certainly taken a huge hit. Coming back up the order once again. Looks like Nore Kamerzian is going to clutch out 7th place. And now Yuri Tugin is going to come under attack from uh, Kedish Kupra. But for the battle for the lead, it's all the 6 in the uh, top 6 positions who realistically have a chance for the win here. As Thomas McHugh is going to go underneath Louis Sage into Aqua Minerale. Doesn't look like it's quite worked out. Imola is quite a hard circuit to overtake on, being quite thin, and um, yeah, as you can see, there's a lot of failed overtakes going on here, but when people do make overtakes, it's certainly a crucial factor in the race, uh, as they're breaking down towards the first of the left-handers here, and through the second left-hander, all getting through nice and cleanly. And through the left, through the right, and ending out the lap, we're going to be on lap 13 or 14, the penultimate lap of the race. And so your race leader once again is Q Fujibashi, as suddenly there's just darkness. I don't know what's happened there. Um, what? What the... What... How? Alright, I've worked out... Uh, you know what, never mind. Forget the darkness. I have, I've had an idea on how to combat that. Um, and it comes down to just using onboards. As, in fact, it's a good idea to use an onboard. As here's Louis Sage right on the back of Fujibashi. So they're going to plummet down the hill now. And in fact, it looks like uh, Louis Sage, albeit was close, has now dropped off. And he's now once again under attack from Thomas McHugh. As Thomas McHugh's getting really close into the, uh, into the tight chicane. And through the third sector now, Thomas McHugh's going to really want to make that move. As we're looking right on the back of McHugh now. I think my graphics are having a bit of a stroke is what's happening with the uh, darkness. Uh, I can only apologise for that really. As look at Louis Sage, he's really committing through that last chicane. He's got a brilliant exit. Pulling away from Thomas McHugh. And with one lap to go. It's going to come down to whether Louis Sage can close up on Fujibashi. Whether, oh my goodness me, the darkness. And he's really on the back now. He's closing, closing. And Louis Sage now is really, really close. Perhaps we'll see him move into Toza here. He's really close on the back. He's going to have a look at the inside. He's going give to give her a little tap. Fujibashi knows he's there. Gives him the room. Blocks him off once again. As they plummet down the hill. An inside left-hander here. 
Sage feathering his throttle and he's going to come down the hill. Fujibashi doing everything she can. We're going to get on board with uh, Thomas McHugh here. As Louis Sage is still on the back of Fujibashi. And that's allowing McHugh to close up now. We have a three way battle to lead, perhaps even more. But it is looking like uh, Fujibashi is going to close it off. She defends through the chicane. Uh, Lucid doesn't make the best of exits. Coming down the hill once again, we've got a brilliant overtaking spot here. As Louis said, she's going to break really, really late. He couldn't really break much later, but Fujibashi made a brilliant exit. And they all get through there, but it looks to me that Fujibashi is going to get her second win of the year. As they're going to come around the final chicane. And Q Fujibashi comes out of the final chicane. Out of the darkness. And she's going to win the Imola race. What a brilliant performance from Fujibashi. She puts her lights on. Probably re uh, recognising the win. That is a brilliant result from Q Fujibashi. In behind Louis Sage. And James Smith actually gets third place in the end. Followed by Thomas McHugh who loses his podium on the final lap. Then it's Isabel Harvey and Yuri Tugud. Yuri Tugud got past Norea Kermertian in the end. And Carlos Rosales rounds out the points finishers. Kadish Cooper comes ninth. Jin Chan won tenth. Alan Kopic eleventh. Nicolas Sharkatano twelfth. JT Dixon thirteenth. And Daniel Gray fourteenth. Harnell, brilliant fifteenth for him. As I'm going to quickly fast forward so I can get to the final race results. Uh, my fast forward's not working. Ah, oh, there we go. And we're going to back out now and show you the final race results with timings. It's Q Fujibashi who wins the race, followed by Sage and Smith. So it's a Mercedes 1 2 3 with a BMW 4 5. 4 5 uh, 7. So it looks like Mercedes are going to be pulling more points than the constructors, and that's a good job from them. And it looks like Q Fujibashi is going to be increasing her lead in the championship, as that's 10 points to her, and that's going to prove crucial in the championship race. Anyway, that's it from me today. I hope you did enjoy that, uh, that interesting race around Imola. If you did, be sure to... Um, Leave a like, subscribe, give us your feedback as I said at the start and the middle of the recording. Really would mean a lot to um, get a get a lot of interest in a second series here. As yeah, it, it makes it more easy for me to get the motivation to run this when everyone is um, behind the series. Anyways, yeah, as I said, that's it from me. Have an awesome week, everyone. I'll see you on Friday, as that's the when the next race is. And, uh, yeah, take care, everyone. I've been your reality. Goodbye.